Hey, I'm Brian. Welcome to my Garage Bible Study. It's been a while. Man, it's been a while since I've led you through something in the Bible, in the midst of the garage. It's been a while. I've had a lot of stuff going on, and uh, I've done a lot of work on this case. My 1978 CJ7, just for reminder, it's been about nine months, 1978 CJ7, exactly like the vehicle that I had in college I had to sell because I couldn't afford it. So I bought the same vehicle with the same engine, same body type, same year, and I am doing a complete frame up restoration. It has taken a long time. In fact, it's been so uh, intense sometimes. I've just thought, no, I, I can't. I can't have a camera around here. No, just, just, just let me escape and get on this thing. And while I'm working on this, as normal, there's things in the physical world that mirror things in the spiritual world. I want to talk about one of them today for you. First, our passage we're going to look at, Book of Psalms, chapter. 147, verse 1 and following. Let's read it. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. Yeah, we'll, we'll tend to lift up our voice and sing loudly at whatever concert it is. I was recently at a Leonard's Kenton concert. Yes, I sang very loudly. Everybody did. No one could hear me because of like 120 decibels of sound or something like that. But when we go to our favorite artists, we're singing. And this pastor is saying, when we get around God, we want to give God some honor and some praise. Singing is a great thing. I ask myself, am I as vociferous singing worship songs as I am singing Freebird? I shouldn't be singing Freebird harder or more, or more vociferously than I do a praise song. Let's keep going here. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. Israel is still in the news. It's been in the news for generation after generation, you know, for thousands and thousands. There's no nation in the history of anthropological history that's had more attention and been more at the focus of world events than is Israel. And it's in the news right now again. And it talks about the outcasts of Israel. The nation of Israel came into being, this is a little, little history lesson, uh, came into being because in 1948, six million Jews had been exterminated in the Holocaust and world opinion finally shifted and said, hey, let's have a safe place for Jews to come because obviously them not having their land is not safe for them. So the United States is the first person to recognize Israel as a national, uh, as a nation. This took over from the British who had overseen the British mandate, that whole region for, for 60 years. And then in the previous centuries, there are a whole bunch of people who have held that land, going of course all the way back to the Jews themselves back in the time of, of the Old Testament. But world opinion said, hey, Let's have this be a safe place for any Jew who wants to come here to live here and they won't get killed, a land of their own. So the United States, under pressure of many evangelicals in America and Zionists, there's people who want the Zion state, the Israel state, to have their own Zion, their own holy mountain, pressured Truman. He signed off. The UN signed off. And then Jews came in from all over the world and emigrated to what we know now today is Israel. Of course, this set off a fury of political intrigue and political uh, controversy and violence and all that stuff with enough blame to go around there. But about as much as I want to say, as soon as anyone starts talking about anything more about Israel or Palestine, they're going to get in trouble. So far, everything I just told you right there is factual and it's just what it is. Now, what does that have to do with our verse here? What it has to do with our verse is it says he, he gathers the outcasts of Israel. Even before Israel was reestablished as a modern state, God gathers the outcasts, gathers us together to make us safe. Israel, when we take a look at the New Testament, the New Testament isn't so much concerned with whatever the literal state of Israel or the literal genetic Jews, who they are. There is some passage in there. It's an important topic, but the New Testament goes to great pains to say that the modern believer the modern Gentile who looks to Jesus as Messiah, who is the savior of all people, including the Jews, is grafted into the family. And we oftentimes feel like outcasts and God is gathering us together. And it says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. What does this passage have to do with this vehicle? As I've been working on this vehicle, 
the wounds on this thing are unbelievable. Like there is nothing on this vehicle that is okay. I haven't found anything. I've had my hands on every single bolt in this entire vehicle, every bolt inside the engine, every bolt outside on the body, every bolt everywhere, 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 every, over the whole entire thing. And there is virtually nothing that was done to this Jeep that was done right. It's been one hit and go mechanic after another or one weekend warrior after another with a, with a vehicle that was just sorry and hurting and needed to be binded up. You see, it's not even so much if it was a mechanic that did a wrong thing or an owner that did their own shade tree mechanic seminar and did a wrong thing. The fact of the matter is, when something was from 1978, which would be, how many years ago would that be? 45 years? When something's 45 years old, stuff just is broken or it gets brokenhearted. There is no way for anything to go 45 years and not have a serious overhaul and not come into the garage. In fact, this is just the most intensive overhaul this vehicle's ever had. It's been in the garage a bunch of different times over the last 45 years. Endless services, endless maintenances. And we wonder why it is that we don't need to park ourselves in a garage. You know, one of the ways that God binds up the brokenhearted is that we know where we go for restoration. One of those places is a local church that we're a part of. It might be the friendship group you're in. It also is recognizing there's a season in your life where you will not be moving any place. You're not going to be making any new progress. You're not going to be setting any records. You're not going to be having accolades. You're going to be parked in the garage. You're going to be recovering from a divorce. You're not going to be thinking about your career advancement because you've got to think about your physical health because everything's going to be focused on how in the world am I going to get healthy because I am not, not well at all here. There's going to be time when you're parked in the garage maybe romantically because you're fixated on getting your, your financial house in order. There's times when God parks you in the garage because you've got opinions about him, attitudes about him, attitudes about others. They're just broken down. You're, you're not getting anywhere. And so he's going to put you in a garage at a time for me as a, as a young pastor, a young manager, where I was hurting people who I had my staff needlessly, stupidly. And I had to get parked in the garage. What that looked like for me was I couldn't have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with anybody who I didn't record on my, on, at that point it was a tape recorder, recorded the tape recorder the whole time, which did two things. One, it kept me from being slopped with my words because I knew there was gonna be a recorded thing of it. And then the second thing it did, it helped me to learn from my mistakes. If I said something wrong, I could go back and listen to it. And the third thing it did also too, is also protected me because maybe I didn't say all the bad things that people thought that I was saying. But I had to manage myself by actually parking myself in the garage, getting some rehabilitation, or as this word says, this, this verse says, healing the brokenhearted, binding up their wounds. There's no way for you to live life. I don't care if it's 16 years, I don't care if you're 16, 36, 66, 86, that's not possible for you to not have wounds. It's not possible for you to not be exposed to the elements and have rust spots on you. It's not possible for everything in your life to operate perfectly and in sync. Everything needs to be parked in the garage. Everything needs a tune-up. Everything needs rust grinded off of it. Everything needs realigned eventually. Everything needs a everything. And if that's you, I just wanna be one person to say, it's okay. And you're gonna be okay. Because God binds up the brokenhearted. Go to a place, go to a garage, and let them work on you. We'll see you next time on My Garage Bible Study.